The reading today is taken from Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 7. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for you, for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. My name is Francis Young, and I'm one of the licensed lay ministers here at Christ the Servant King. Ever since Remembrance Day, as we know it, began in 1920, names have been central to the practice of remembrance. In the aftermath of the First World War, in which 10 million military personnel were killed, the naming of who had died was often the only consolation available. So great was the scale of the slaughter that there could be no repatriation of the dead. But there was hope that they could be given a name and buried with dignity in the great military cemeteries of the Western Front. There was hope that those missing in action could at least be confirmed as having died, to give their families some closure. And there was hope that communities could find a way to commemorate by name those who had given their lives on war memorials in every town and village. A name, in some cases, was the last shred of identity that some soldiers were left with. And some, of course, were never named. The tomb of the unknown soldier in Westminster Abbey, inaugurated in 1920, symbolized the impossibility of giving a name to all of the bodies recovered from the Western Front. One of the inscriptions on the tomb of the unknown soldier is this. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And every year we speak of those known only to God, who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives, whose names are lost to us. And we say those words that are up there on the screen in front of us. Their name liveth forevermore. Even though some of their names are unknown, but as our reading this morning from Isaiah reminds us, every name is known to God. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And God's knowledge is not just of our names. He knows our inmost hearts. He knows our true selves. He knows who he created us to be. Again and again in the Bible, names are not just convenient labels to identify people with or ancestral inheritances. They're expressions 
of God's will for that person. When Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, tries to call his son, Zechariah, after himself, that was the practice at the time. You're the eldest son, you're named after your dad. God strikes him dumb until he obeys God's command and calls his son, John. And when the angel tells Mary that she is to be the mother of God's son, he gives her the name God has planned for him from the beginning of time. You will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Yeshua in Hebrew means God saves. Because when a name is given by God, the name is the person, and the person is the name. Their name liveth forevermore. On the face of it, this is a hopeful statement about our collective practice of remembrance, that we as a society will continue to remember the sacrifices of those who have given their lives in the service of God, King, and country. But even the most solid of memorials crumbles at the last. Even the most devastating of wars passes out of remembrance eventually. We cannot be sure that future generations will think these things worth remembering. So if we are to say that their name liveth forevermore, and if we're to mean that, it must mean more than simply committing remembrance into the fallible hands of human beings. For the very fact that war is still a scourge on earth tells us well enough that we are apt to forget. But God does not forget. Their name liveth forevermore because to all who believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, he gives eternal life. Because his name is the name that is above every name. At his name, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. For without the sure hope of his name, our names simply perish. Without the sure hope of his name, people forget, families forget, societies forget, civilizations forget. But nothing is lost with God. Our God remembers. Our God knows you. Our God knows who have come before you and knows them by name. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he cries out through his prophet, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Amen.